Hey Pixels! In this tutorial, I'll show you how to code the first drop-down menu style based on the four drop-down menus we designed in Adobe XD using a little HTML and a little CSS. Be sure to follow along because remember, practice makes ExoPixel perfect. In XD, we can share our design for development to get all the info we need to code our drop-down menu, including colors we used, fonts, font sizes, padding, and more. I've gone ahead and exported the images I needed, including icons and illustrations that I'll need when coding the drop-down menu. In our HTML file, we'll need to first set up the structure of the navbar, then we'll set up the structure of our drop-down menu. To set up our navbar, we'll need to first create a header. Within the header, we'll add a div with the class name navbar container, which as the name states, will contain all the content for the navbar. Within the navbar container, we'll add a div with the class name logo container. Within the logo div, we'll add an anchor to wrap around the logo image. Below the navbar container, I'll set up a nav. Within the nav, I'll create an unordered list with the class name main menu. Then I'll add our four menu links using the list tag wrapped around an anchor. There's a divider after the first three menu links. So I'll create a div and give it the class name divider. I'll add another list anchor for the sign in menu link. Lastly, I'll create an anchor with the class name CTA BTN to make our get started button. Our menu structure looks great. But remember, the first menu link is where we need to display the drop-down menu, so we'll need to add some more structure to it. Scrolling back up to the first menu link, we're going to give it the class name drop-down. We'll also need to add an arrow to indicate that this particular menu link has a drop-down. I've linked the Font Awesome icon library to this file, so I'll grab the down arrow icon snippet from Font Awesome. Right below the drop-down menu item, I'll create an unordered list with the class name drop-down col1. I'll also create a div and I'll give it the class name drop-down col2. This is where the content for the two columns in our drop-down menu will be placed. Within the first column, we'll add our first menu link. Let's create a list item. And then we'll add an anchor with the class name drop down link. Within the anchor, I'll add two spans. The first span will have the class name link icon, and the second span will have the class name link label. The first span will contain the link icon, so I'll grab the image that I exported from the design mockup in XD. The second span will contain the link title and link subtitle, so I'll use the paragraph tag and give them their respective class names. Now, I'll repeat this for the rest of the links in the drop-down menu. The structure of our drop-down menu is almost complete. We just need to add content to the second column in our drop-down. First, I'll add an anchor. Within the anchor, I'll add an illustration image. Below the illustration, I'll create a div with the class name CTA content. This div container will contain a heading, 
some CTA text, and finally, I'll create a span with the class name arrow icon, and I'll add an arrow icon from the Font Awesome icon library. That's it for the HTML. Now, let's make this drop-down menu look exopixel perfect. In the CSS file, I've already imported the font I'll be using via Google Fonts. I've also set up variables for all the colors that will be used throughout this site. First, let's set up some base styles for the website. We're going to give the body of our site a background color, font family, font size, and we'll also add some font smoothing. I also want to add a custom color to all anchors, remove the default underline, and turn them into block elements. I'll also remove margins on all paragraph elements. Now that we've set up some base styles, we can style the navbar. Really quickly, the navbar is the area on a website that contains the logo and components such as the navigation and CTA buttons. In our case, the navbar is a header which contains our logo, navigation, and CTA button. We'll add a background color and padding to our header. Then, we'll need to style the navbar container, notably using Flexbox to space our logo and nav components on the opposite sides, as well as establishing a maximum width for our container. We'll now apply styles to the logo, menu, and menu links. To style the divider, we'll apply a left border and then add padding all around the element. Lastly, we'll style the CTA button by giving it a background color, some padding, and a border radius to round the corners. We'll also change the background color when a user hovers over the button. Our navbar is styled. Now let's style the star of this tutorial, the drop-down menu. First, let's select the drop-down. We'll set its position to relative. Then we're going to style the drop-down content so that it's positioned absolute but still relative to the drop-down parent element. This will allow it to exist outside the confines of the header. Just so you can see how the drop-down menu is styled, I'll temporarily comment out the CSS declaration display none. Now, we're going to apply the hover pseudo class to the drop-down while also selecting the drop-down content. We'll set drop-down to flex instead of block so that the two columns that make up the drop-down menu sit side by side. Now that we've got the main drop-down functionality coded, we just need to style both columns respectively. Watch closely to see how the CSS properties and values style each element.
Now, I'll remove the commented out CSS declaration display none so we can see the final result. So there you have it. That's how you code the first drop-down menu style with HTML and CSS. This looks so good. If you followed along and coded your own version of this drop-down menu, share it with me on social media using the hashtag ExcelPixelPerfect. I'll see you in the next video.